Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to publish your Unity game, or application for that matter, um, to the App Store Connect. Um, so the whole process is pretty much the Unity build, then you got the Xcode project, and then from Xcode you're going to be archiving your project and you're going to be uh, pushing it up to the App Store Connect. So the whole process was a little bit tricky to kind of figure out. I kind of got to the point where I wanted to punch somebody at Apple in the face. But luckily it didn't come to that and uh, I was able to figure everything out and get everything working. I did run into a few errors along the way um, during the upload process so I'm going to cover those errors or at least mention them so um, in case you guys run into them you guys know what to do to resolve them and then move on with your lives. So uh, without further ado I'm just going to get into it here. I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller. Okay, so the first thing you guys are going to want to do, obviously, is enroll in the Apple Developer Program. Um, I believe there's like a $100 fee involved with that. Um, so basically, you just go to the Apple Developer website, create your account, submit your payment, and then it might take up to a day or two before you get approved. Um, after you get approved into the Apple Developer Program, um, you're going to want to go over to App Store Connect, which I believe is appstoreconnect.com. Um, and you're going to want to log in with your developer account and then set up your application. So I've already gone ahead here and done that. I have my uh, game application already configured. Um, so you'll see here uh, the name of my game is Shadow of the Orient. If you guys want to check it out on the App Store, you guys can do so here. I don't know what this URL is here. Maybe if you guys can remember that or type it in, go ahead. Uh, or just go to the App Store, type in Shadow of the Orient and my game should pop up. Um, so, like I said, I already have my application set up here. The one thing I want to mention here is your bundle ID. Um, make sure that your bundle ID that you configure in your App Store Connect matches up to the bundle ID in Unity. Um, so, in Unity, I believe under Project Settings Player, you can actually configure your bundle ID. Um, so, just make sure that the bundle ID in Unity matches the bundle ID that you have in your App Store Connect. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to upload your application to, X, um, to the App Store Connect through Xcode. Okay, so that's one thing, one very important thing to keep in mind is the bundle ID. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys, um, what do I got here? Let me go to my videos. So these are all pre-recorded videos. Hopefully the quality is okay. I'm just going to go through each video because I had to record these from my Mac and I'm actually doing this video I'm publishing this video on my PC. Um, so I had to pre-record the videos on my Mac and then um, bring them over to my PC. And now I'm going to be loading them up and hopefully the quality is okay. Um, if you guys have any questions uh, about anything, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, okay, so the first thing you need to do on your Mac is you need to go into Keychain, right? So under Utilities, go to Keychain Access. <clears throat> so in my case, so during the Xcode publishing process, it's going to ask you to log in with your Keychain account. Um, I forgot what my Keychain password was, so I had to reset my Keychain entirely, uh, which was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and when you do that, it wipes out your account and it wipes out all of your security certificates. So you're going to have to set all that stuff up over again, right? You're going to have to do all that stuff over again. So in my case here, I had uh, after I finished setting up my username and password again for Keychain, um, I had to first I had to create a certificate authority, right? So you may not have to do this if your Keychain is already configured. Chances are you already have a certificate authority created, but if you don't, um, this is the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create your certificate authority. Let me just back that up there for a second. Right, so basically what you want to do here is you want to enter your name. Um, let me just replay this. So enter your name, um, leave it as a self-signed certificate, leave all the other options exactly as is, and then enter your email from. Right, so all those options can stay as is. Enter your email address at the bottom there, email from, and then just hit create. So let me just back up there for a second again. Right, so let me pause it. Right, okay, so like I said, enter all your information, Enter your name, leave it as a self-signed certificate, 
um, leave these options uh, to the default settings and then enter your email address and then hit create. And then that'll create your certificate of authority. So once that's done, you're gonna have to go under certificate assistant again, and then you're gonna have to select request a certificate from a certificate authority, right? So once you get the pop-up here, just enter your information, enter your email address, enter your common name. Your common name could just be your first and last name, or maybe you could use your business name. Um, but in my case, I just put my first and last name. And then your certificate authority email address, uh, that's a required field. And I believe that email has to match up with the email that is on your certificate authority. Um, right so make sure that email matches up all of and then after that you're going to want to select save to disk so you want to save this certificate somewhere locally on your disk and then just hit continue so once that's done um, it saves the certificate to your to your disk so in this case here i'm just going to show you where i saved mine so you'll see here i just created a folder called app certificates and this creates a certificate signing request and this is something that we're going to have to load in xcode uh, a little bit later uh, on in this video, right? So it's very important that you set up the certificate because it, it is a requirement. <clears throat> okay, so now open up your application in Unity. So here I have my application set up. This is a game that I created called Shadow of the Orient. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that everything in Unity is properly configured, right? So in my case, my game is using in-app purchasing and it's using Game Center. So you'll see here that I have my IAP, that I have the IAP uh, package installed and it's all connected to my Unity account. Um, then under, under project settings player, make sure that your bundle identifier, like I mentioned earlier, make sure your bundle identifier matches with the bundle identifier in your App Store Connect. So like I said right here, this bundle identifier needs to match up in Unity, right? Like I mentioned earlier. Okay, so our bundle identifier is configured. Set your version number. That could be whatever you want it to be. Um, if you scroll a little bit further down, um, you have some settings here. So let me just pause the video here. So you can select the target device. If you're just building it for iPhone, you just wanna select iPhone here. Or you can select just iPad, or you can do iPhone and iPad, which in my case, that's what I'm selecting. Target SDK, I just left that as device SDK. That's the default setting, just leave that as is. I mean, if you need to change that, go ahead. But in my case, I left it at the default. <clears throat> and then there's the target minimum OS, which is 12.0, which I believe was the default. I left it at that. Um, and then you're also going to um, you're also going to need the proper plugins installed. So if your game is using you know achievements or leaderboards or anything like that or, or uh, Bluetooth controllers. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have Apple Core installed, which is the Apple Core plugin, and then the Game Controller plugin, and then the Game Kit plugin. So I already have these installed. Right. Um, under, there's nothing you really need to do under this particular screen here. Everything is already enabled for you. Um, but I'm just showing you that I have these plugins installed already, right? So let me hit play here. Now, in order to install these plugins, um, you're going to have to download them from uh, Apple's Git repository, which has all of these plugins. Um, so it's got all of these plugins in the repo. When you download it, you're going to have to decompress these um, these particular plugins and convert them into these TGZ files, right? Which I guess are zip files on the Mac. Um, and in order to do that, you're gonna have to use this build.py file. You're gonna have to run it through the terminal. There's a couple of commands you're gonna have to run in order to create these zip files. Um, you, can, you can do a Google search for that, or I believe the instructions are actually on the Git uh, repository. It'll tell you what you need to type in the terminal in order to create these zip files. And once these zip files are created, you're going, you're going, to, you, you're going to have to load them through Unity, through Unity's package manager. Okay, um, so those have been built. Let me just fast forward here a little bit. Little bit. Um, now I sh So I should mention here that um, I did 
configure my uh, IEP catalog. I'm not entirely sure you need to do this. I think this is just more for testing purposes. Um, if you want to test your in-app purchases, maybe locally on a test device, it might be a good idea to configure the IEP catalog. Um, but again, this works locally when you um, when you set up your app <clears throat> on your App Store Connect, you're actually going to be able to create your in-app purchases here. And then Unity IEP is actually going to um, get these in-app purchases from your App Store uh, Connect account. <clears throat> Okay, so once all that's done, you're gonna to wanna to build your game. Um, make sure, let me just pause this here, make sure that iOS is selected and you're gonna to wanna to deselect development build if it's already selected. If not, then that's fine, then just don't select that. Um, run the next code, you can leave these, def you can just leave these to the default settings. Um, so once that's all good, hit the build button. So at this point here, you're gonna to wanna to build your application. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. Just select the folder of your choice and you can build it out. <clears throat> okay, okay, so once your project has been built, um, let me pause this video here for a second, you're gonna see here that Unity created an Xcode project for you. So this Unity iPhone Xcode project. So you're gonna wanna double click on that and then this is gonna launch Xcode. And from here, under Xcode, um, click on Unity iPhone here in the sidebar. And what you're gonna wanna do here, let me just pause this video for a second. What you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna want to click on signing and capabilities. Make sure you're under the All tab, right? And then you're gonna wanna select Automatically Manage Signing, hit Enable Automatic, and select your account. So at this point here, if you don't have your uh, if you don't have your App Store account connected already, um, you can click on Add an Account, <clears throat> right? So, at, so it's going to ask you to sign in with your Apple ID, and then after you log in with your Apple ID, you're going to have to select that self sign certificate that we created earlier. You're going to have to load that into here, and then that should be it. So in my case, I've already gone ahead and done this. <clears throat> Okay, so that account. Uh, one thing I should mention here is that if your game is using Game Center, you're gonna wanna click on this capability button. That's gonna launch a pop-up window. And then from the pop-up window, there's gonna be like a, a list of um, like modules that you can add to your application. Um, make sure you select Game Center from that list and then it'll show up here under this list here. Sorry, I didn't actually record that in this particular video, but just so you're aware, you can add capabilities to your application. And if you're using Game Center, you're gonna to wanna to add that particular capability. So let me just progress a little bit further here. Now under iPhone tests, make sure you uh, enable the same settings under the All tab, right? And then under Unity Framework, um, under Build Settings, there's, this, there's one particular option here that in my case was causing an error when I was uploading my project to Xcode. Uh, so in order to overcome that error, I had to set this particular option here, always embed Swift standard libraries, I had to set that to no. All right, so just so you're aware of this, this, this option here might cause you an error. If it does, just set this to no, otherwise you can leave it to yes. It all depends if you encounter that error, because some people on Google said they encountered the error, some people said that they didn't encounter the error. In my case, I got the error and I had to set that option to no, and then the error was gone, right? Okay, so once that's all done and configured, um, at this point here, you can you can run a local test if you want. If your iPhone or your iPad is connected to your, to your Mac, you can run a local test. So here I have my iPhone connected. And if I hit the play button over here, it'll actually build it uh, to my device and I can actually play test it. Uh, but in this case, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so at this point here, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to product, hit select archive, and then that's going to start archiving your project. So this might take a little while. Okay, so you'll see here that our build has succeeded. 
So from this point here, you're going to want to distribute your app, right? So select distribute app, um, select App Store Connect, which should be the default setting. Hit next. Um, upload it's the default setting. Hit next. So now it's going to. So at this point here, let me just pause the video here for a second. So what it's doing right now is it's going to prepare the app records. So it's going to check your application with the application that's configured on the App Store Connect, and it's going to make sure that it matches up. Right, so it's gonna it's gonna do that by checking the bundle identifiers. So let's do so. Let's continue here, analyzing app version, fetching app store configuration. Okay, so that's all good. So it's gonna ask you to upload, automatically automatically manage signing. Okay, so so far so good. Everything is working correctly. Okay, so. Let's just give this a couple more seconds. Shouldn't take too long to finish this process. Preparing summary. Okay, so if everything validates and everything checks out, you're gonna be prompted with this upload screen. So it's gonna give you a summary of your application. All right, so here's all the summary of everything. So from this point here, you can hit upload. And after the upload process is done, you're gonna get a, a confirmation. Uh, pop-up window, which I'm going to be showing you in a second. But there's one more thing here that I, that I need to mention. Um, your application does require um, icons. So make sure you have icons uploaded under each of these different sections here for iOS. If you don't have all the icons uploaded, you're going to get an error during the upload process prompting you to add an icon to your application. Right. So this is just one headache that you need to be aware of. Okay, so you'll see here that the app uploaded successfully. I went back and redid the upload and it uploaded successfully to my store and that's it. And then from this point here, um, I'm just going to stop this video. Uh, from this point here, let me jump back into App Store Connect. Um, so after the upload process is done, it could take anywhere from five to ten minutes to process the upload or it could take seven to eight hours. In my case, I had to wait like a whole freaking day for the uh, for the upload process to complete, um, but usually it goes pretty quick. Um, so once that's done, um, you're going to see your app over here is probably going to say ready for submission or ready for review. So you're going to have to submit your app. But before you do that, you can actually test your application or your game using Test Flight. So let me just show you here how it works. So what you do, so I have my iPhone here. So what you do is you go to the App Store. You download the Test Flight app, right? So I have my, is this the main screen? Settings. Uh, anyways, you download the Test Flight app, and after your upload gets processed on to App Store Connect, you'll actually be able to download and test your app through Test Flight, right? <clears throat> so in my case here, I actually have um, my full version installed, but you'll see here that it's gonna prompt you with an install button. You can download it, you can install it, you can test it to make sure that your um, that make sure that your game center is working correctly. So your leaderboards and your achievements, and you can also test your in-app purchases. And the in-app purchases are actually run through a sandbox, so you can go ahead and make a purchase, and it won't actually bill you or charge you to your you know to your live account. Um, so, anyways, guys, that's pretty much the process of how you can get your Unity game or application published to App Store Connect. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. Um, you know, I created this as a means to kind of, um, you know, kind of catalog this whole process so I can remember later on down the road in case I forget. But I hope you guys find it useful as well. And that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.